The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome, my brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Just Finn McElroy. <laughs> I'm your middlest brother. Do you want to build a Travis McElroy? Ugh, crazy. I'm your sweet baby brother, Griff Rosen McElroy 2. And this time it is Frozen 2 Watch. And this one is Frozen 2 Watch. Listen, boys, we could talk about character all day long. Everyone's already doing that. They're saying, you know... Uh, they're saying, uh, thank God he's back. It's Olaf again. Well, they, you know, there's a lot, all kinds of those cool, like Hollywood reporter headlines. Thank you know, God he's back. I don't want to talk about character. God damn it. We're so fucking ready for God this. God damn it. I've prepared myself for the snowman. Right. Yes. But what are we doing I, instead? Because that sounds really good to me. I want to talk about predictions. Okay. I've seen the movie, so this is going to be tough for me. Okay. Well, Have everyone... you seen the movie? Did you get it in an early screening? I got the early screening for this one, and I saw all of her new powers, and it's kind of... I don't want to spoil it. I guess hold your ears for the next few seconds if you want to spoil but it's fucked up how many powers they gave her in this one. Okay, here's well, my question, because this is one of my theories that I want to see if it pays off. All right, everyone's saying, like, there's going to be other people with other powers, and, like, mm. Elsa has, like, frozen powers, and there's right. going to be someone with ice, or someone yes. with fire, and somebody yeah. with, like, I don't know, whatever fall is. Is there someone who can control human flesh? There is Whoa. a flesh, uh, a flesh mancer. Okay, uh, is what there is somebody it. who just has a song that's like, do you want to build a man? Yeah, and they can and do that. So most of the songs I'm tra- glad I'm glad you brought this up. And again, spoilers, but most of the songs in Frozen Two are parodies of Frozen One. <laughs> yeah, they are. This sort is of, huge. Did yeah. they get Al? Tell uh, me they got Al. They got Al. Al plays Magic Al the Fleshmancer. Uh, he's in it. He's got a little um, a little Olaf, but instead of snow, it is of course skins and bones and muscles and muscle groups. Is and it teeth. so cute? It's you know it's Disney cute. Um, it's not really my cup of tea. I'm more of a DreamWorks guy, but uh, it's <laughs> cute as cute as they can render it. And so there's that. Uh, there's um, let it uh, let it Poe, and so Poe from Kung Fu Panda shows up in that one. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> what? Well, oh, this is the DreamWorks crossover we've craved. No, yeah. you know what's fucked up is they never even acknowledge. DreamWorks really? or the character or the plot. It's almost like they got like sort of the computer assets for it off the uh-huh. DVD for Kung Fu Panda and just sort of put his skin in the movie. Oh, you know, guys, I'm reading here on Smoking Gun, a leaked copy of the script. Yeah. And they also, there's a song in here called Glove is an Open Door where the yeah. Hamburger Helper Glove shows the up. The Hamburger Helper Glove does show up. And, and he's in it? He's in it for, it's more of like a can't, like blink and you'll miss it. He does do a whole song though. But it's just really um, fast, or it's just missable. Uh, yeah. For and then there's um, for the first time for the f- hold on, I'll get it. Come on, uh-huh. you'll get it. Get it for for the for first the, time, for the worst time in for uh, uh, Evan <laughs> Rachel Wood. Wait, she's in it. She's, she's actually in it. in it. That's not how a good about, one. How about Lee and Rhymes Forever? Lee and Rhymes. What? It's yeah, Lee and Rhymes. They do two of that song, one with Rachel Neville, <laughs> Rachel Neville Wood, who's her evil sister. <laughs> There's a lot of evil pick. sisters in this one. Uh, of course, Princess Frozen is back. This time, her arm turns into a sword. And <laughs> then there's uh, also uh, he's a bit of a fixer upper, but this time it's Chip and Joanna Gaines singing. It. Chip, yeah, and that's oh, that's fucking so hysterical. funny, yeah. so good. Uh, they get back together in the movie, and so it happens in real life too. I think. Um, Griffin, I'm sorry. I have to, I'm busy calling a doctor because that Chip and Joanna Gaines humor that I crave. Because it's a fixer upper. No, Travis. If you explain to me, I'm gonna f- bust a fucking nut. 
<laughs> I can't think about it anymore. This show is called Fixer Up Burr. It's oh like my it. God. No, you can't actually sing it. That's too bad. Travis, you're uh -huh. so bad. Oh, I am bad. I'm naughty. Um, <laughs> hey, Trev, tell yeah. me you got some other Frozen parodies in the hopper. Oh, let me see. Are love there about, that many other okay, songs? Okay, what did we do? We did, okay, I'm gonna let me go through. And there's Love is, uh, you could do a parody of the the first one. The one that's like, hi, hi, <laughs> But it's hard to do a jokes on that one. I thought you Why nailed is it. it? Well, it's mostly just syllab. It's just vowels. When yeah, it's not in our language. In. Uh, yeah, they do sing a song about the ice. That one's a little on the nose. That one was good. We can keep that one in Frozen too. Yeah, maybe and by it's just all that of one. cold and winter air and mountain rain combining. I didn't know there were really words to this. This is amazing. There's so a big, it's called big Frozen on the mountain top, and there's snow on the top of the mountains too. Is split, uh, the word split the ice apart? And break the frozen fart. Nice. <laughs> Justin, that's really good. Hey, send them an email for Frozen 3 and let them know that you're ready to come back in. And um, you, I know you are uninvited from the set of Frozen 2. Say, ask if it's time for you to come back, if they forgive you. Uh, also, this one, me for Olaf sings a love song about Summer Glau. Oh, that's fun. Also, yeah. in this one, Olaf's got a snowy dick. Whoa. Okay, he See, it's himself... funny you should say that, because right after I said he sings a song about Summer Glau, I realized how inappropriate it was that the song is like, how happy I'll be in summer. And then yeah. you, like you were reading my mind, said, I'm going to take a little bit of heat off of Travis, no pun intended, and make it even more Yeah, Justin, say something even more controversial than I just said, please. And now he's calling himself Snow Love, and it's like, that's nothing. <laughs> Yeah, huh. that is, I guess, uh, inappropriate in a different way in that this is a comedy show. And so that was probably an inappropriate thing to say for that format. Snow off. Yeah, you're already. Are you sure? So, yeah, he does. He's got a dick in this one, but they, it's never in frame. He's always and it's it's never addressed. <laughs> camera, so it's just a trail through the snow. You know, if you look at the trail that this dude's hanging the main vein <laughs> right down to his brain, and he's got a th really thick rod, and but you don't see it. Fucking release the Snyder cut with these wide angle views of this of this snow hog. Do you know that twenty minutes of Frozen Two is just Olaf begging for Elsa to make him a child? Mm. Make me a child. <laughs> Craft Please me. make me a make me a child. Also make me a father. Oh, I'm reading here. This is a new one on Smoking Gun. It's just released. They address the fact that in this one, you find out that the only way Elsa was able to bring Snow off to life is she had to steal a soul from someone in town. Yeah, so yeah. That's a dress. It's all of it. it all of his implied. memories start flooding back. It, it was implied in one, and it's yes. good that they just go ahead and you know put the tiger on the table and yell yeah. at it. In this and one. Olaf has to deal with like you know he finds his family, but like his human family. Yeah, and and they uh they don't want him back. Do you know what the name of the guy was that they killed? Mm -hmm. What uh, Olaf? Oh, that makes sense. Why else? Why would it have it? Yeah, sure. I thought you so, might say it sounded like Michael Keaton. Or your uh, brain. Use your fucking brain. Frozen Two is a good movie. Uh, I give it a hundred rate movie percent. Go ahead and let's do the first question before we get in any more trouble with the super fans, though. All right, here's my question. Do you? This is the first question. It's from Justin McElroy. Uh huh. Do you think that Frozen Two will join the illustrious club of Pitch Perfect Two and Austin Powers' Spider Shag Me as sequels that eclipse the total gross of their predecessors in their opening weekend? Ooh. Travis. Hmm. Huh. Mm, yes. Griffin. Uh, but what's just the, the opening weekend, right? I'm trying to think of a joke to say at this. Here's I, a joke. The Joker made a billion dollars. Yeah. Here's, here's a joke on us from God. If I may, here's my follow-up question, Justin. Do you think that Frozen 2 will eclipse Pitch Perfect 2? There's no way of knowing that, Travis. And that's impossible to do. You've said something Utterly ridiculous. Instead of that, I'm going to read a question. And we're going to actually help people this time. We'll see. I'm a writing tutor from... I'm a writing... Everybody stop highlighting the questions. You're messing me up. I'm begging you. This visual gag is not working. Because you're just highlighting things and making it distracting for me. I'm a writing tutor for my school. Part of my job is reading over and editing papers people have submitted online. As I am a fool... 
I started the year out strong. <laughs> I've done <laughs> way more papers than anyone else. Griffin has now made the text red with a red background. I will not be stopped. Like, the next person is about 10 behind me, and the secret is 30 behind them. Everyone knows this. They all have the power to look it up through the... <laughs> Okay, Griffin say the text extremely large now. He had initially wanted a quick edit, but now he's making it harder on himself. The document has become 20 pages long. Utterly unforgivable. I fixed it. No more joking around, Travis. Justin doesn't want to have fun with this one. Everybody knows this. They all have the power to look it up through the system. As the semester has gone on, however, I've just gotten lazier and busier. To what degree can I just stop doing this important part of my job and rest on this reputation? That's from Super Lazy in San Marcos. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, but it might just be because I was goofing on Justin yeah. like, the so whole it time. They have done – this person – I will recap. This person, uh, like, grades exams and, like, edits papers and stuff. They right. edit papers. And they've edited so many more than their coworkers that it's embarrassing. Ooh, but, but now they don't want to do job, all that work. But anymore. they don't want to be the good one anymore. Yeah. Now I they want to go when when good editors go bad. Well, that seems you know like I mean? it's it right there, right? Of you could just start. Maybe this isn't a loudly announced thing. This is like you whisper to somebody like, "Hey, I'm going to take it easy because I know you're looking bad, right?" And you say that to enough people. And then when people are like, hey, Joan's really starting to slack off, everybody will secretly feel gratitude to right. you. Like when really you're just like Ferris Buellering over there. You know what I mean? It is inherently rough stuff when you work at a job that has a leaderboard. When you work at a job that has some like, that has the Xbox Live leaderboard where they can look at it and see who's working the best and the hardest. Mm -hmm. I don't I, like that. Yeah, I don't like that. We had that. The at, only time that works is on guts. That works on guts, and that's it. We had this at God love him, but when Tommy Smurl employed me, tried it was like, how many documents can you scan during your eight hour shift? I always came in with my numbers were in the toity. There's no way around it, folks. Um, and that was that just de incentivized you, right? You didn't even want to work more after that because I, you knew you'd never be able to make a comeback. I thought I was working pretty hard, but my numbers were in the fucking toity. And I don't know how I could have possibly, you know, put shit in a scanner faster. I don't know what kind of hot tech these my 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 contemporaries were doing if they were they had like you know fucking like uh, Fushigi skills, like unstacking these papers and putting them and uncollating them and putting them in a scanner. I don't know. But it made me feel like garbage, and then that's why I quit that job on top and wasn't fired. May I make a suggestion here, question asker? Why sure. you you seem like you uh, have enough intel now from grading all these other papers, editing these other papers. Why don't you just pick the ones from people who already do a good job, and you just go ahead and rubber stamp those on through of like mm. this one was clean, no notes, and then you just do that from now on. Uh, and slowly back off and put yourself in like third place. Mm. Just rubber stamp so you're doing less work and aim for third so you're doing less work. It's a little more believable. Because here's the thing, you're gonna get caught on one paper, right? right? And then you'll know you need to start working harder, right? No one's gonna be like, well this one, I noticed a couple grammatical errors here, I better go back through all of their paper. No, because everyone's lazy. You're only gonna get caught once. That is that Tra Travis has said uh, one helpful thing here, J just the one, and it's that everybody wants to find the way to work the least amount. So yes. like you're mm -hmm. not alone. Wait, in that's this. the only helpful thing I said. You're not alone in this endeavor, and so like you have that to rest on. You're not going to get in a bunch of trouble. People are going to be like you. Oh, I see. You also were trying to work the least amount that you could, um, but you didn't work as hard at that as I did, and so I did catch you. Yes. I think that you should let the person don't do any more until the person in number two is within like one paper and then do like six or seven oh, in a row. Slam them. You're just like always like just out of reach. Mm -hmm. Just out of reach. Give them something to chase. That would be right. Fucking Give them something to chase. So tight. If you took like 50 papers and like graded like 99% of each mm -hmm. one of them. 
And then somebody's like, oh, it looks like I finally overtook you. <laughs> and then you go in and you just clear those out in like 10 minutes and you're like, uh, check again. And then they're going to absolutely yeah, yeah. flip shit. What's this? On, oh, sorry. What's this under the couch? It's all the papers I've graded. Wham! Right? Yeah. Oh, what's that behind your ear? It's another paper I graded. Or you go through their papers and find all the mistakes that they missed because they also are trying to pull this same. Listen, uh-huh. the American education system's in a lot of trouble, guys. A lot of joke. How about a Yahoo? Uh, yeah, I would like that. Oh, well, this one was sent in by Michelle. It's by Yahoo Answers You guys users. remember that Dane Cook movie, Employee of the Month? Okay. Just made me think about that is all because there's like a big competition. Oh, my God, Travis. Can, Holy could, shit, Trav. That can't be it. There's got to be more. There's well, got to be more. It can't just be that, right? It's employed. Yeah, you there's, get it. Oh, like, well, been, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all remember the movie, but there's got to be more to the to the statement than that, <laughs> well, right? Well, let me finish because you recorded a, it. Because there's you a know that we're using magnets to record the data that you're collect you're you're creating with your mouth. Well, certainly, if you know we're putting it, we're digitizing this. You got all of get time. To the let, him fin- let him finish, Justin, because I know to, I pray to sweet Christ in heaven above, <laughs> watching out for me and forgiving all my sins daily. That Travis has something else, and it's not just <laughs> saying, "Hey, that was like the plot of the Dane Cook movie." Travis, because please at go the ahead. end of it, yeah, they had a checkout competition betwixt Dane Cook and Dax Shepard, in which yes. is discovered that da- uh, that Dax Shepard has been accidentally giving away hundreds, perhaps thousands of dollars of free groceries because he flips things behind his back. Let's just pause, 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 pause real quick. My stomach is, my guts are like twisting all up. My sure, guts are twisting yeah. all up like in a vice grip juice. Because you're start- worried that he's not going to have We're something, but I'm pretty runway. sure that he does. There's a brick wall at the end of the runway, and we are almost out of runway. And I'm looking at that brick wall like, who the fuck put that there? But Travis, bring us on home. Anyway, do you guys remember that movie? The bile is rising up in my stomach and throat. I'm just you saying nobody talks about that than, movie. Do you anywhere. remember it? There was just a time when people were really trying to make Dane Cook into a movie star. Ooh. Do you remember that? Like he was in Waiting. Yes, it was harrowing. We remember Steven. He was in Yo- Good Luck Chuck. I it's think? from Yahoo Answers user Steven. Good Please Luck tra- Chuck. That was one, right? Trav, Trav, look at my yeah. face. <laughs> look at my face. <laughs> look I'm at not. his face. Do you okay. see it? Yes. You can't because it's just bones. It's just a skeleton. Why didn't skull. he ever get a sitcom? Do you think they just jump straight to movies? He's back. Did you hear about this? Yeah, he's back. That is true. He is in Frozen 2, the biggest movie of the of the decade. Did you know this Houdini one? and Blowfish is coming out with another album? Yahoo Answers user Steven asks, what would you do if you caught your dog cheating? At what? Dot, 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 dot. Eating in someone else's house when it was hungry instead of yours. Playing with another human in their yard. Huh. Going to the vet when you didn't take it. Whoa. Uh, waging its tail to someone else and barking at you for no reason. Um, I'm you- sorry, Steven. That's not your dog. <laughs> that might just um, be a dog that looks a lot like your dog. Because that's true. Like, a lot of dogs look like other dogs, Steven. Are you sure? No, nah, that's fucking Hambone, dude. I'd know that dog anywhere. That's my pup, Hambone. <laughs> He's not Hambone. answering to Hambone, though, Steven. No, no, no. I can prove it. Hold on. Watch this. Let me get a slice of bologna. Check this out. When I throw it, he runs over and eats it. That's my ham bone. Okay, that's pretty, it's pretty you conclusive. Call, that's, I thought about changing his name to Bologna Bone, but the he already had a name on the books. Watch, the vet. watch this. Watch what happens when I do the um, that air siren. He'll use it sporting events. <laughs> see? You look at, see him jump? That's ham bone. <laughs> look at him now. See, he's pissing. He's pissing. He's pissing. Only ham bone does this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the liquid coming out of his wiener? His little dog wiener? It's amazing. Now, look, this is the weird thing. This Okay, this is weird. I'm glad you are here to see this because this is not only 100% bruised his hand bone, but it's absolutely fucking wild. Look at his butthole right now. Yeah, it's like fudge or something. I don't know, but he makes it he with makes his it. body. He turns food into it. That's so hand bone. <laughs> That's so hand bone. This dog is cheating on me. I love Hambone. He is my precious boy. But he got. I got home from work today. I said hi, Hambone, and he said hi. By the way, Hambone talks. That's how I know it's Hambone. Oh, and well, I was like, that you should have. Wait, hold on. You should have led with that. It's. I mean, it's just Hambone being Hambone. I was like, how was your day? He's like, ah, pretty good. A little busy. I had to go. I went to the vet. And I was like, I didn't take you to the vet. We can all agree that's the weirdest one posited here, right? 
Yeah. Right. Playing with someone else in their yard. Hey, yeah, people are fun. They're throwing a frisbee. Oh, my dog gets in on that. Somebody offers my dog some food on a porch because my dog is lost and dog's eating the food. Okay. My dog took themselves to the vet? Well, no. They went to no, the vet. You just didn't someone, take them. Yeah. Someone else took them. Another human. Okay. They didn't say that, though. Okay. But it's assumed they called the left. What am I going to do about this fucking two-timing ass dog, this cheating dog? Because I can't make him sleep in the doghouse. It's where they sleep already. This does happen sometimes where, like, we'll have people over and Buttercup will, like, sit in someone else's lap and cuddle with them. And I'm like, God damn it. And oh, someone wait. will say, someone will say, like, oh, yeah, Buttercup loves them so much. And I, because I am me, have the desire to say out loud, not as much as she loves me. Do you, is this a real thing that you feel, Trav? Because I'd like to really unpack it off- the call i'm already in therapy i'll do it on the call i just want to know that my dog loves me more than she loves anybody else on this planet i think i've earned that well well, then let me give you a tip trap if i ever come over and i give uh your dog a slice of bologna uh i will then become the person your dog loves the most because of its dog brain but if you come to it and say, but I have two slices of bologna, I have good news. You're back on top of the leaderboard. <laughs> Listen, my worry is not my dog showing affection to others. My right. worry is my human friends who have human brains announcing, this is like if someone made Teresa laugh and all my friends said, I guess Teresa loves them more than you. That's not how that works. Well, yeah. And yeah, because <sighs> Teresa doesn't have a dog brain. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, no, I she's get that. not. She she's not easily romanced by a single slice of deli meat like your <laughs> dog and, uh, all dogs are. You see those videos? Hey, y'all seen these videos where uh, like this, these folks like roll up to some sort of place where a lion lives and the lion's charging at them and you're like, "Ooh, here we go." But then the lion jumps up and gives them a big hug and snuggles them because they're oh like, my "Oh, you raised me. I love you. You're my favorite." And then you feel like, "Oh, that is cute." I'm a little disappointed because I thought it was about to get wild. Imagine <laughs> now me walking into frame and saying like, "Hey lion, I'll give you a piece of bologna if you tear them limb from limb." They do it. <laughs> I saw a video today that someone posted of like uh, this guy who like saved this herd of elephants. He died and like uh, the herd of elephants came to his house after he died. And then a year later came back to his house and the people posting the video were positing as like they knew. And they and all I could think is like maybe if the elephants could talk, they'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah, I think we were supposed to take a right. Sorry. We did. Sorry. We didn't hey, you guys end up in this uh, house. Y'all got any baloney though? Hey, you're elephants. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Hi, we're here looking for that very, very small white elephant that had all the peanuts. Yeah, you know The it. very small white element elephant that had all the peanuts. Is he around? He disappeared a year ago, and we kept seeing him go into this bad cave. <laughs> he okay, died. We'll oh, in. he died. Oh, no. Are the peanuts still... <laughs> around though Were they buried with him like an egyptian pharaoh oh, if we come back shoot. in a year will you have gotten more peanuts we'll check we'll check we'll give you a year but listen if we come back in 12 months and there's no peanuts here you're dead ski yeah all right <laughs> we're very big we've just, you're very little we've just in the past 30 seconds been introduced to the concept of mortality <laughs> and we're itching to try it out on you the juice is right get it <laughs> the juice, the juice she's running. That there, there are going to have to be some indiscernible number of peanuts more, but we'll know because we we're not good with math, but we can tell like amount of fullness. Um, I do need to share a response here from Yahoo. Answers oh, I user, love these. Eric. You know, we don't do that enough. I know we don't, and here's why. Uh, Eric says, "Hell, my dog's a Jack Russell, and I'm from the East Coast." We are both high strung. What? What's okay. that mean, Eric? Eric also okay. has shared a source. And then the source for this information, life as I lived it. <laughs> and yes. Eric kind of the East Coast Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Eric did done share a picture of himself with the dog. And it's about, imagine what it looks like. Yes. Good job. Hell so yeah. Does, that's the, dog, Eric. does look- the dog look like it's got cheating on its mind? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew it. So this he uh, looks like he looks like he's in the middle of talking about how the refs should get out of the way and just let him fucking play. Yeah, 
Uh, and the dogs let them play. Yeah, the dogs here looking at a better, like human being off just out of frame. Someone with probably a, a an undisclosed number of bologna slices. I just got a new job. I start late in December. However, I've been told to attend the office holiday party that takes place before my actual start date. Ooh. On the invitation, I've been encouraged to dress up for a holiday costume contest. Oh my god. What holiday costume can I wear that will make a good first impression on my future coworkers and also win the holiday costume competition? Ho 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 and holy hills. Ho 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 holy shit, you can't do this. <laughs> you can't. You cannot do this. There is no what like you'll never undo the right. the difficulty of this maneuver is incalculable. You have no frame of reference. No one. Can I tell you something you. right now? I don't even know if this is holiday themed or just a costume contest that happens on a holiday or what. And if I don't know that and I have nothing writing on it and it makes me nervous, why are you so confident that your question is not how do I get out of going to this? Yeah, it's um, and you have it. It's you could. There's so many landmines here, gang. So many landmines because you could think like, what's a perfect costume? I'll, you know, I know exactly what it is. It's the new Joker, and you show up dressed up as the new Joker, and some dude like has a breakdown, and they're like, oh no, Jerry's extremely afraid of the Joker, as as he should be, <laughs> as he should be. But it's you the didn't clown know that. Of crime. You've ruined this holiday party for him because also, he hates can I just, the Joker. Can I just say it's bonkers to me that your job is making you go to the holiday party before you've had your first day of work. They that are probably not. They're okay. Just devil's advocate. They're probably not forcing this person to go. They're probably inviting them. Because they just got hired. I mean, I just have to go with the language here, Justin, and the language is, I've been told to attend. Uh, I guess that's, okay, that's actually fair, Travis. You're right. I should have d drilled down in the nomenclature, the uh Oh, wait, word it, it says here, choice. it also says here, by a dude holding a big pipe. Ah, oh, man, what is this job? It sounds like <laughs> you might be working for the Joker sometime. Here's what you're going to want to do. You are going to want to attend this. You can wear holiday appropriate clothes right like maybe it's light you know like a it has like holiday bounding you know what i mean like oh yes that's definitely like holiday s <laughs> right without it being like a santa suit or i'm a reindeer right you right. you are going to look holiday appropriate you are going to have at most one drink you will stay for 45 minutes if there's a gift exchange you will not participate and then you will go home and hope that when you then start your first day of work, everyone will have forgotten you by then, and you can start over. That's the perfect scenario for this. And unless, I don't mean to be ne unless unless like I'm not gonna bullshit you. There's a million ways to fuck this situation up, and so it's like not worth. I it is absolutely not worth it trying to go for this. But there is like probably one absolute success state that exists in here. And it is if you like roll up, you fully spray painted your body silver and you have a Santa Claus hat on and you have two present cannons and your legs. What is are, the, what's the play here? Your legs are sleighs and you come in riding a, you know, a motorcycle that you've sort of body modded to look a little bit like a reindeer. And you're like, you know, the fucking like. You know, holobot, holiday bot, hollybot, and you roll in and you just fuck the place up, and everybody like, and you don't even stay for the party. Like, I think you roll in, you blast a few presents into some people, <gasps> um, you, you know, you open up a flap of your motorcycle and dump it into the punch bowl, and then people like. Is that good what you just did? Is that bad what you just did? <laughs> and you just like, you get, I'm saying get in there for t like 120 seconds and go fucking hog wild, destroy the place, and then roll out. And it'll be like, who the I, fuck was that? And then come back 10 minutes later with no costume. Yeah. Like, what happened in here? That's crazy. A holiday robot? I can't believe I missed it. What about this idea? Could you dress exactly like the person that hired you? Uh huh. And just do a theme costume and do kind of a funny impression of them. Like if they have any personality traits that you could mock, you kind of do yeah. do them, basically. Really roast yeah. them. That's fine. Roast, turn it into a roast. I'm not going to tell you to 
hire a team of actors to try and infiltrate and take over the building, posing as terrorists, but really they are very high-profile international thieves. And then you get into the building, take your shoes off, kill just all of them, and rescue your ex-wife. And then everybody will be a buzz about you. I won't say that because I think it's problematic to suggest you hire a bunch of people to pretend to be terrorists at your holiday party. Dress as Santa. When people say, hey, great Santa costume, you say, what costume? This is how I dress. Oh, get used to yes. it. I'm doubling down on this bit and I'm going to do it every day. I was going to talk about and make a joke about like how funny would it be in Die Hard if he had been an actual new employee. But then I think about how weird it is that he did that, saved what has to be like a super rich business kind of thing, right? Then he went yeah. back to work. Like, doesn't that feel like the kind of thing that he saved a building from a bunch of terrorists and they like, should have given him all his money. Like, that's how right? it works. If, if I save your life, folks, you better give me all your money and assets because they were worthless a second ago when you were a skeleton <laughs> and then before I saved you from it. It just seems if like it should have If you save been... someone's life, that should be, they should have to start over. Right. Yes. You should get their spouse, their mm -hmm. kids, their home, all their worldly possessions yeah. should become yours. They put a diaper on. They're a baby again. Yep. <laughs> They're a baby again. They have to forget words. Yep. Mm -hmm. They can't use words for five years until they like really, they have to relearn all of them. I'm just saying, compare what John McClane did to what Sully Sullenberg did. You know what I mean? Like, And that dude's fucking rich as hell. That I'm dude is saying, like- I'm saying, there's been yeah. like eight movies about him and he's dining out on that forever. And he's John McClane had movie. to go back to work. And you know what's fucked up? He's like in the Hollywood Hills and he's getting buzzed every night with his friends, uh, Tom Cruise and Gerard Butler. And they're just like fucking like, you look up at those Hollywood Hills and you think, man, Sully must be having a great time. But really the- only way that that dude can get it up anymore is to fuck up some geese in a big airplane and they won't let him do it again. And he's asked like, I have enough money to buy the airplane, but they won't, they still won't let him do it because it's dangerous because he would have to fly around looking for the geese. And he would. Do you think that dude has ever had to say out loud, are you telling me that I ran a plane into a bunch of geese and landed on some water and saved a bunch of lives and I was able to do that? but I'm not able to play myself in a movie. Are you sure? But ju Justin, then, I think he's probably said something along those lines, but replace play myself in a movie with, I can't get extra bacon on this Subway sandwich. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying if I was Sully Sullenberger, Sully Sullenberger, I would just say, I better fucking play me in the movie of my story. And don't let anybody else steal it because it's my journey that I went on myself. Mm -hmm. But you know, he'd be like, and then I f did a whole loop de loop in the airplane. I did a cool trick where I flew. I buzzed a sky and my sidekick. Kick, kick Cloud Kicker was there and we fought off the sky pirates. It was so fucking tight. Got the plane up into space, didn't I? He <laughs> didn't. <laughs> he just, Sully didn't use that kind of language, Griffin. He does you know now. That. It's that bad influence of Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler's a potty mouth. <laughs> uh, do you mind if we take a brief uh, intermission to go to the money zone? Uh-huh. You do mind. Okay. Well, let me know when would be a good time for you. Y'all, I just got some holiday meundies. Oh my gosh, the snowman? Yes. Are you kidding me with this adorability? So Come cute. on. And matching snowman socks. Oh my gosh. This is exciting, I a, right? I, I have a package downstairs from that. I haven't opened it. This is what you're telling yeah, you us do. what's inside it? Well, hold on. Let me cook it. Dum, 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 dum. Dum, 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 dum. Rip. All right, what's this bit? Like, this bit wasn't anything before I got started doing it, and then I got to the end of it, and it still hadn't become anything. So Sometimes you gotta just take a run at it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's the holidays, and it's time to get yourself a present, by which I mean me undies, because they make the perfect hibernation undies and loungewear. This holiday season, cozy up in their new robes, treat your feet in their new soft slippers, and of course, match the whole fam with their soft new baby bodysuit. Yeah, 
Check it out. They got holiday prints and cozy new products. They're going to have gifts for everyone, including yourself, because you're worth it, as far as I'm concerned. And get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Just go to MeUndies.com slash MyBrother. That's MeUndies.com slash MyBrother. So you're sitting on your couch. You're in your MeUndies. Wait, give me a second. Let me get in the mind. Okay? Go on. Okay. You're so comfortable, right? You're loving it. (laughs) I'm loving it. Oh, I'm, I'm watching Everybody Loves Raymond and having a great uh, time. I'm watching Griffin That's watch good. Everybody Loves Raymond. Okay, I'm Don't. watching myself watch Barry, and in the reflection of Barry, I can see Travis watch Griffin watch Raymond. Don't watch this next part. Zip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Max Fun. This is the Postal Service, and I... <laughs> Not only am I not paying for this stamps.com ad, I want you to pay me for the damage you've done to our product hey, and nation. Listen, Max Fun, it's me, the Postmaster General. And listen, we all jerk off to Ray Romano's great comedy, but can you not talk about it during my good stamps ad? <laughs> So you're in your underwear in the fiction of this bit. You're so comfortable that you don't want to get dressed. And well, luckily, there is a what stamp else is happening, you can buy bo- in the scene. <laughs> what are you talking about? Griffin's in the background. Just- I'm the one you're talking to. I'm getting stamps. I get. Don't that. look at me. Ta- look at tra- tra- this whole bit. Travis is getting stamps. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting doing, stamps because I'm, I'm sitting doing comfortably. Something else. But there is <laughs> something else happening in the scene. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that you 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 don't have to get all fancy to go to the post uh, office. You, no, I cause don't. Because you, you can buy stamps with stamps.com. No matter what else you is can happening your- in the room. You can use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. You don't have to spend a minute of your holiday season at the post office this year. Sign up for Stamps.com instead. There's no risk. Just go to Stamps.com and enter my brother. That's Stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in my brother. You got to tell them what the special offer is. Oh my God, y'all, you're going to get a special offer that includes four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts. Stamps.com, click on the microphone and enter the code my brother. One word. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. And don't invite Griffin to stay at your house for the holidays. Hi, I'm Renee Colbert. I'm Alexis Preston. And we're the hosts of the smash hit podcast, Can I Pet Your Dog? Now, Alexis. Yes. We got big news. Uh Uh-oh. Since last we did a promo, our dogs have become famous. World famous. World, like, stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Second big news. Mm -hmm. The reviews are in. Mm Mm-hmm. Take yourself to Apple Podcasts. You know what you're going to hear? We're happy. It's true. We're a delight, a great distraction from the world. I like that part a lot. So if that's what you guys are looking for, mm-hmm. you got to check out our show. But what else can they expect? We've got dog tech, dog news, celebrities with their dogs, all dog things. All the dog things. So if that interests you, well, get yourself on over to Maximum Fun every Tuesday. Do you guys want a Yahoo? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck me, I guess. <laughs> I want a munch. God. You guys aren't really giving me much heat. Griffin you, was all disappointed. You came in low. Uh, well, well if I'm you say I want a munch, season. I'm not going to jump up eight octaves. I just yeah. meant Griffin was like, fuck me, I guess. Well, I started doing it. It still I came hurts in hot. to get interrupted. Okay, so do you want to munch? Yeah, Quack. I do. I want to munch. Squat. I want to munch. Squad. G G G G G G G G G. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast uh, about the latest and greatest in quick service dining. Uh, quick um, meatless update. Ooh. Meatless bim bam. Meatless Monday. Meatless munch. Meatless munch. There it is. Quick meatless munch update. The newest uh, meatless product, Four River Smokehouse debuts uh, Beyond Burnt Ends. Huh. This is a, a burnt end sandwich that is meatless. That just seems, it seems like there's a lot of other meats we should try to get through These, before we move on to burnt end sandwiches. I would say more, listen, I like burnt ends. Don't get me wrong. But it is one of the least appetizing names for a thing ever. It yeah. makes it sound like, hey, yeah. here are the ruined <sighs> bits. Like, I'll take them. Oh, really? You want the ruined bits? Like, yeah. Oh, I love the ruined bits. 
We've scientifically replicated ruined bits. That's wild. What's wrong with us? Anyway, that's not the Munch Club, though. Okay. This week, we're going to talk about Yogurt Land. Yes, which I don't finally. know that we've talked. I don't know we've talked about Yogurt Land I, before. I'm, we got to have talked <clears throat> about Yogurt Land. They are brave pioneers. They got 300 locations across the U.S. I said across. I heard. They got 300 locations across the U.S., Australia, Dubai, Guam, Indonesia, Myanmar, Oman, Singapore, and Thailand. The holidays are here, and Yogurt Land is rewarding fans with a new promotional flavor and topping beginning December 2nd. Yogurt Land is spicing things up with... I will give each of you a couple guesses. Oh my god! Uh, I will tell you this: it is a it is a manufactured product. Okay, spicing things spicing up with candy things. cane, sriracha. No, and no, like takis. No, it's flaming hot Cheetos. Oh, fuck, that was oh the other get one. out! Available this holiday season for a limited time only. Thank fuck. It pairs perfectly with a variety of Yogurtland's frozen yogurt and light ice cream flavors. With a variety of them. This year, we're in, this year we've introduced our fans to a variety of new toppings and flavors. And Cheetos Flamin' Hot Topping is by far the most unique. It, yeah, but they, that's not a synonym for good. Yeah, have, what if they, what, why is it flaming Hot Topping? Why is it not just flaming? Is it? Have they done something to the Cheeto to make it more, I don't know, digestible? Hey, boo, it's Flaming Hot Cheetos that they're putting on yogurt. Okay, that's but also it. That's in the yogurt? That's the whole fucking bit. We're exci- uh, they say we know our fans are headed. This is, um, by the way, um, I don't know, some drone. Uh, <laughs> we know our fans are headed into this holiday season ready to spice things up. The fucking fiction that you're trying to sell me on is that your fans of Yogurtland are headed in there ready to put some fucking flaming hot Cheetos on their ice cream? Are you fucking around with me? Hey, Justin, can I ask you a question? You're, you're I would say, both the most educated on QSR trends like person mm-hmm. I know and maybe that exists on the planet, who yeah. is to blame for this? Like, if you had to track, because here's the thing, Yogurtland did not all on their own direct, one day wake up direct. and say, we have to put Flaming Hot Cheetos on our yoga. They had it to have seen direct, some kind of trend developing that forced their hand. It is a direct fucking line. Do you want to know where it all starts? Yes. For me? Yes. It's a direct line to the double down. Yep. Huh. It all comes back to the double down. The first time that KFC made a sandwich where the bread was fried chicken and the innards were bacon. That was their bold way of proclaiming, we've got a great new sandwich for $3.99 and also God is dead. Okay. KFC started the downfall of everything the with the downfall. double down. They threw some fire, some some fuel to the fire with the fucking famous bowls, and I think that Taco Bell has a considerable amount of blame yeah. with the Doritos tacos. If I, if I, I think if I that may, that's a huge. I also think McDonald's when they were like, um, uh, "Hey guys, uh, is pizza anything?" And I think that KFC, <laughs> I think the Colonel probably looked at that like, "Wait, hold up, we don't just have to stay in our lane; like we can get nasty." Yeah, but Griffin, huh? I would order that pizza is something. Pizza is something. Flaming hot Cheetos on top of yogurt is nothing. That okay. is not. That is nothing. If if Yogurt Land said we're now going to do pizza too, I would be like, oh, expanding, as opposed to saying, and now we're just going to ruin some yogurt somebody was looking forward to eating. You have to eat these Cheetos on top of a Yogurt Land yogurt to save the world from the big asteroid, <laughs> which. Yeah. Flavor? Do you pair it with vanilla? I was thinking vanilla, right? Because now I'm thinking of how the powder would look as it gets mixed in there, and I don't hate it because I'm a fucking toilet. But I also um, the thing is, it's like any any flavor that I love. Like I love yeah. like cheesecake flavor. No, like that's ruined now. <sighs> I like mint chocolate I'm, chip. No, that's ruined now. But okay, but I'm thinking of a sort of citrusy 
flavor, right? Like something with a little bit, something with a more Ugh. acidic note. Maybe a dark chocolate. That's fucking stomach turning. Dark chocolate. Also that has available a for a limited to, time. Ooh, dark chocolate might be good. Yogurt Land's new molasses. If someone tried to give me dark chocolate dipped flaming hot Cheetos, my microphone's I would eat those. muted. Hold on, let me try to fix my microphone. It's muted. Also available for a limited time. Yogurt Land's new molasses gingerbread cookie frozen yogurt flavor is giving holiday fanatics a little spice with every spoonful. The new flavor tastes like a chewy molasses cookie in this part fucking the new flavor tastes like a chewy molasses cookie straight from the oven. Huh? It's not- by definition, <laughs> I mean by fucking definition it's it's fucking frozen yogurt. It does not taste fre- it could be anything the one thing is incapable of tasting like right. Is that it is fresh from the oven. Now, okay. some Cheetos on this would not be the the pits, I feel. It would be the pits, but it wouldn't be the worst imaginable combo because you do get I'd that. be able to choke some of it Yeah, down. cinnamon spice, so very nice. Mouth is cold. Chester's here to help me out with that, with his hot heat. Hey, guys, I like offhandedly Except- said chocolate dipped flaming Hot Cheetos, and now I'm afraid I've made that happen and I want them. Right, separating yogurt land from competitors. Oh, I'm sorry. I think my microphone is muted. Hold on, <laughs> guys. I, I, let me check. Okay, you probably didn't hear me. I said some dark chocolate dipped flaming hot Cheetos. No, I don't think that would be good. Separating yogurt land from competitors is the company's team of flavorologists who've developed more than 200 different craveable flavors. Okay, whether traditional or exotic, each recipe uses. Real ingredients from across the globe. I want to break this down a little bit because you hear a lot of mealy mouthed sort of half truths in in these things, and I do want to stop it and take a pull over the car and look at each recipe uses real ingredients from across the globe. The inverse of that statement, mm-hmm. were it not true, would be that Yogurt Land uses imaginary ingredients from across <laughs> the globe. Yes. That you do not have to tell that the that the ingredients are. Here's the one thing we'll say about them: they're extant, and they are present on this they globe. They cast shadows. They're real, true ingredients. Um, challenging stuff, Jews. Challenging stuff. Yeah, I let me know how this is. I guess if you got a yogurt land near you, I don't have one anywhere around. I'm pretty close. I'll fuck one of these up. Here's a Yahoo. It was sent in by several people. Thank you, everyone. It's from Yahoo Answers user Keith who asks. Would a motorcycle with a nude rider go faster mm-hmm. than a clothed rider? The weight saved by riding nude without any gear on could be up to 20 pounds. The wind resistance may be less if oiled down or waxed, perhaps? No hair either. So they mean, they mean awfully, well, awfully nude. Hey, I'm not a scientist. Does oiling yourself up make you less wind? Re- like, yeah, the wind just yeah. slides off of you, I guess? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, it, every thousandth of a second counts. I mean, I yeah. guess. When you're tearing down the track and racing for pinks, you better yeah. be oily and nude. All the greats are. I uh, I think that you would get a little extra speed. Yeah. I don't know if it would be discernible. to Like, I don't think you'd be able to pay attention to the thousandth of a second you were saving with all the... Bugs flying up your urethra, <laughs> but I do think you would <laughs> okay. f- be going a little bit faster. Sure, sure, sure. Hey, Juice. Yeah. Do you anticipate that going fast on the motorcycle is really going to open up that that <laughs> urethra? <laughs> uh, yeah. Like you know how you see the funny things where people use a leaf blower on their mouth and it like it blows their mouth back. You can see their teeth and. You ever laugh at one of those for a while? Right, yeah, I've laughed at those for a bit. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I kind of cracked myself up thinking about them. So this would be like that, but for the, your urethra. blows your urethra mouth open so you can see the teeth. Yeah. that's That sucks, dude. Also, I have mine cut open bigger like the Joker. That sucks too, dude. Is that what a vasectomy? Is that how they get in there? For the- <laughs> Why the so is. impotent? <laughs> I so fertile. So, um, 
Uh, would you go faster as a nude rider? Here comes the new... Look, everyone. Here comes the nude rider. Don't you use from... Like, if you're uh, someone with a penis doing this, don't you lose something yeah. with, like, penis resistance to the air? Mm. Right? Yeah. And you... <laughs> You also are gonna go slower because you don't don't want to get a boner and make people think that going fast gives you a well, boner. Well, why else right. would you do it, Justin? I guess that's true. Hey, what is that, that guy on the motorcycle? Here he comes. <laughs> There's really no cool or chill part of the motorcycle experience for you to get a boner from. If you do that thing um, where you're revving your motorcycle outside my house. Uh, that should obviously be punishable by the death penalty, but also if you do that and you get an erection while it's happening, people are going to be like, um, Doug, and Doug's are you okay? Now, Doug's going to have to yell, unrelated. Yeah, that's that was going to be my point, is if I saw somebody riding a boat motorcycle full nude and they did have chubs, I, my first thought would not be, I'm sure that is from something else. <laughs> I'm sure that has nothing to do with it. But then I also with... would think, they are driving distracted. Can we get off the boner chat and talk about whether or not this nude, greasy writer is going to go faster than their counterpart who's wearing 20 pounds of clothing? Here's the, okay, I'm going to say my my vote, no. And here's the reason, psychology. Yeah. Because I think if yes. you're wearing 20 pounds of, you know, leather and metal and you're looking all cool and like you feel, for for whatever reason, more comfortable gunning it. And if, if you were naked, if I, if this was me, and mm. I was naked on my chopper, yeah. I don't know that I could physically make myself gun it the same way, because I just kept thinking, oh, if this goes bad. Oh, yeah. no, if sure, this goes of bad. Even if, I, even if the bike falls over going like five miles an hour. It'd oh. be rough. You'd get quite a raspberry. It would be, it would be not great. And my, I know that I, mine would go slower because of the, it would have to because of the sidecar, because I would have to get a sidecar to put my dipstick in. Okay, uh, I have made a potential friend in my chem class. Oh, nice. The first time I met her, she said she lived in Forest Club Apartments. Thinking she misspoke, I thought she meant Forest Bend Club Apartments where I live, so I told her I live there too. Now it's four months in, and I've been living a lie as she bonds with me over our shitty apartment. I want to be real friends with her, but I'm too lost in the sauce. <laughs> How do I unfuck this? Wait. She listens to the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's from Living in an Apartment of Lies in Georgia. The okay, call listen. is coming from inside. Oh, first of all, you just fixed it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's it. Fixed. I can give you. I was gonna say like you can move into that apartment now or whatever. Yeah, I, but here's the thing. Hey, if you're listening to this and you live in uh in Forest Club Apartments in Georgia, and you made a new friend in Kim class four months ago. They meant Forest Ben Club Apartments, but they still want to be your friend. And this is a long distance dedication. Here's the song. Uh. I fucked up, I and fucked I'm lost up. in the sauce. I'm so sorry. I needed these three dipshits to help me get out of this one. That might be the most we've ever helped someone. Yeah, I, it's like, it's fixed. Maybe that's what, maybe from that, from episode 500, from that point forward, our show is just going to be a direct messaging service where people can send us messages to fix things that they don't want to deal with, with like no names, no, and we could just say like, hey, they fucked up. If you're listening to this in I New like Hampshire, this. if you're listening to this in New Hampshire and you went into a grocery store and like, or you, you went to buy a movie ticket and the person said, enjoy the movie. And you said, yeah, me too. Like, I want you to know that movie person forgives you. That's good. It will be like the person in class who's like, hey, can you find out if Michael has a boyfriend and tell right. him I like him? Yeah. Then we, we can do that for that person and get a hundred dollars. And we'll do misconnections too. Misconnections could be fun. Hey, literally, how long would we do that new format before it went so fucking terribly wrong? Day one. That we would never recover. It's like F1, yeah, right? Ep that it's like 
we like do- unintentionally dox somebody, like for sure. Day well, one, would, F1. we would be privy to criminal knowledge and not do do the right thing. Like it would be like, dear brothers, can you tell Matthew I hit his brother with my car? That's <laughs> right, it was me. And then we didn't tell the authorities, I guess, fast enough that we would go to jail like that funny Seinfeld episode. Griffin, I don't know how much faster I would have to tell the authorities, but I think it was just as I could. You'd think that, but, you know, we finish recording, you go to the bathroom, you go get yourself a soda. It's going to slip your mind. It's fair. Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening. Um, We've recorded so many episodes of this show in the last week. And we're just, we don't want to, we didn't want to give you another live one. So we decided to sit down fresh off the plane. And we're recording and another one tomorrow. It's the, Next yeah, week's is going to suck shit. So when you're like, I hate the live ones and we turn in a real shitty product anyway, just think about that as you sit on your fucking throne, King Midas. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you touch It'll- turns to a shitty podcast episode. So now whose fault is it? This one was good. This one kicked ass. We had all kinds of funny jokes. The, the next one's going to be a fucking bunch of shit laying on the ground, and it's going to be you that made us shit while you watched. <laughs> hey. What is this energy? It's gray energy. Hey, I'm going to bump up the energy to say Adventure Zone Graphic Novel Book 3, Pedals to the Metal, is available for pre-order now. If you go to theadventurezonecomic.com, you can pre-order it, and then you won't have to think about it again until it comes in the mail. Uh, sometime in July. So that's pretty cool. But you'll want to think about it again. You will. You'll want to think about it all the time. And you will. It will become the will. beating heart that echoes in your ears. Until mm-hmm. then it arrives. Your constant companion. <laughs> anyway, thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Finding a link to, the, well... You can't find a link to that in the episode description. I say that for another show, but we've done this one almost 500 motherfucking times now, so I think y'all know where to find the song. Music retailers, both virtual and tangible. And thanks to MaximumFun.org for having us on the network. And check out all kinds of great shows like uh, like, uh, Stop Podcasting Yourself and Mission is X and Can I Pet Your Dog and all kinds of them. Uh, One more. Um, I'm going to be at Louisville Galaxy Con this weekend. Me and Dad are coming. We're doing a bunch of stuff Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, If you want to check it out, uh, it's going to be the schedule is going to be up on travismacroy.com. We've got photo ops and character building workshops and signings and all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, you won't want to miss it. Uh, uh, Yeah, come to that Galaxy Con 19 in Louisville. Some crafts with the kids. Yeah, it's going to be great. We should bring your kids down. We should also say last weekend we wrapped up the Become the Monster Tour. Twenty nineteen is the uh, like, yeah. most sort of well, the most touring. I mean, we got Candle Nights coming up, but uh, it was the it's the most touring we've ever done in a in a year, and uh, it all went super well because you all came out in a big way and and helped make it all a big success. And so I just wanted to say thanks and that we had a lot of fun, a hell of a lot of fun this year coming to all your great cities. And yes, uh, we'll be, we'll be whipping up plans for, for next year soon. Um, so how about a final Yahoo in the meantime? Do it. Yes. Tessa sent this one in. Thanks, Tessa. It's from Yahoo answers user Chaboy who asks, is a wind turbine still a clean source of energy if it's powered by a fart? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's going to do it for us. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my brother, my brother, and me. Uh, my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been the aforementioned podcast. And kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hey, cool shirt. Oh, this? Thanks. I got it at MaxFunStore.com. MaxFunStore.com. Hmm, that's strange. I visited MaxFunStore.com. MaxFunStore.com. A few weeks ago and didn't see it. That's because they've just launched a ton of new stuff. Right in time for the holidays. Oh, cool. There's patches, mugs, totes, stickers. 
even a onesie. Nice. Those would make great gifts for everyone I know. Great, because I already got you something from there. Thanks. Now, excuse me a moment. I need to look up MaxFunStore.com MaxFunStore.com on my smartphone. You know, to see what's new. Yeah, you can't go wrong with anything from MaxFunStore.com MaxFunStore.com <laughs> 